right, salut, you guys. Um, welcome again to our second installment of our BSL podcast for the year. I'm your host for this one, Hashem, joined alongside our commissioner, Zahid. What's going on, Z? How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Good, good. Um, we are very excited to, again, welcome two new GMs to the league uh, that were not by their own fault, but subject to some controversies last year involving a certain team I used to run <laughs> for different reasons. Um, but we're very happy to have Always Ansari of the Muggles, their GM, and Taha Iqbal of the Ottomans this year. Welcome, guys. How are you guys? Good, man. How are you? Good. Good, good. good. Yeah. Congrats, guys, on being named GMs. Um, you guys have two very different histories with BSL. We do, yeah, a little bit, you know, a little bit. Yeah, uh, Papi, Papi's only Papi's joining us as well. Yeah. yeah. It's Papi, you got Oase Ansari, you got both today. Yeah, for the guys that, for the guys that don't know, uh, Oase is split personality. So sometimes he's Oase and sometimes he's Papi. So he might be I would say like Papi's split personality. I feel like he's Papi more <laughs> than he is Oase. But Again, on the field, he probably is Papi more. Hey man, I'll let, let the fans decide that, okay? <laughs> let the fans decide. So what I was saying was, you guys have very different experiences or histories with BSL. Oasis has only been in the league for one year. Taha, you're a veteran. You've been in the league since day one. Since day one, yeah. Right? Do you think that gives you an edge, Taha? Considering you're one of the GMs uh, that have been like, Omer Sheikh, Hassan Chaudhry, Bilal, haven't been in the league for five years. I think I think the fact that uh, Oasis is playing with guys like Rehan and Shaheen, um, I think, uh, you know, uh, even though it's his second year, I think he should be good in terms of managing the team because he has veterans like uh, Rehan and Shaheen to help him out. So I, think, I don't think it, it, it makes a huge difference. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we'll see how, how that goes during the season. Yeah, Oasis, do you think it, being a one-year player in BSL... Well, gives mean, you a little bit of disadvantage compared to the other GMs that have been no. here longer? Uh, to an extent, um, I guess for like the bottom order, like in, te- in the sense that like the, f- the final few rounds or middle order, uh, I don't know everyone yet, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do know enough for me to be like, okay, I know just by eye who can play and who needs a little bit of work. Um, but I mean, when you get guys like Ray, when you got guys like Shaheen, they kind of really have an eye out for these things. They're experienced as well. So, I mean, I that think, kind of takes... Yeah. You were at, the, di- you were at a disadvantage because Rehan wasn't there at the draft. I think yeah. you were on the call with him I mean, that constantly. call didn't really matter because once I drafted yeah. Shaheen right away, it was kind of like we were having that you conversation. Knew right. you were going we had a game plan going into it, right? We knew That's what fair. we wanted. Did you guys talk to Shaheen beforehand? He, like, he was aware, oh, yeah. so you guys, oh, he, he was, was involved of your, yeah. of your strategy and stuff like that going in? Or yeah. More so, or less, yeah? I mean, essentially, like, I mean, of course, because of uh, whenever, you know, me and Taha or like the Ottomans and Mughals do something, it's blockbuster, of course, of course right? Like, uh, <laughs> standard. That's just uh, standard, standard, you know, yeah. two great teams. Um, so anyway, uh, I had a game plan going into the draft that did not include Rehan, that did not include Shaheen. But, you know, given the circumstances, you know, I had an opportunity to get Rehan. And so I had to make that move. I mean, yeah. for me to be able to get some guy like that, I mean, that just kind of boosts everything that we had. And I got to keep my first pick as well. So me, him, and Shaheen, you know. But you have to also thank a lot of the other GMs for just chatting up on the group. So you pick up <laughs> things and then you're like, yeah, okay, no question. well, what you had in mind is probably not going to happen anymore. So No, and I think I um, mentioned this in the last pod, but I'll say it again, that um, one of the one of the things we look for whenever we're picking the GMs as from a board perspective is you want guys that appreciate healthy competition but yet not to the detriment of the brotherhood principles of the league so mm-hmm. if you're going to ask someone their opinion on another player you want someone to be honest and fruitful about it right and provide that insight because at the end of the day you'll get a chance to play with them again in the future could yeah. being a draft and no one really gains from that perspective right so it's kind of better to have guys that are open about that and have those conversations surrounding certain guys um, that trade though I mean, we have both of you here. Um, Baha, I know you were in a position in which you were either choosing your brother-in-law at right. three or choosing the best guy on the board in Ray. Right. Um, and then you made a blockbuster pick and picking him on himself, which is a great pick. Like, no one could argue that pick generically, but was that pick in mind with potentially making that move? Was it discussed beforehand? Was there anything? Take us through what was happening because you were both there. Both picks made sense on paper. And the swap shocked everyone because of the players that were involved but nonetheless also made sense because they were background stories that kind of complemented that so 
Right. I think uh, just generally, I always wanted to play with Imran. Uh, that goes without saying. I think it, the league knows about that. Yeah. Uh, last year was the first year when I did not play with him, even though the games that we did play against the Ubits, uh, which Imran was playing for, I think those games for me were the most exciting. Uh, you know, uh, that brought brought out the best in me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but having said that, I think I enjoyed the season that I had played with Imran and Amir uh, as well. He's a really good friend of mine. Um, but yeah, so I mean. Even before uh, the picks were decided, I always wanted to play with him. Yeah. It so happened that, um, you know, I got third pick. Uh, yeah. And obviously, you know, it only made sense for me to draft. Uh, for sure. Um, and I think I was able to get something out of it still. No, for the sure. fact that I got third and fourth round uh, picks uh, in Because the alternative my... would have been you taking Imran at three. Right. Which is not a bad... It wouldn't which have still, benefited me in yeah, any you way. Wouldn't, it wouldn't have been a bad pick in the sense of why it made right, sense to you right, in terms of the talent. Right. He's, he's incredible. Five to a player, yeah. but... Yeah, and, and another, um, you know, uh, slight cl- complexity here was the fact that Rehan is a really good friend of mine. And I think yeah. he was a well, great the, gentleman about the, it. The fact that you were the Ottomans now. Yeah, and Rayhan yeah. was picked by the Ottomans, right. and then now you're moving him to his arch rival, the Mughals. <laughs> right? So I think it, it wasn't so much about the arch rivals. I think it was just also, about moving a friend who you've drafted yeah. to another team. It, I think always, that. Hashim and Rayhan traded you last year, and now you now you traded for Rayhan. So <laughs> Your it's come, eyes it's come, are like it's it's come. Oh, you're like so excited. It's come. It's come full circle, baby, baby. Leave it's come full circle. Right? <laughs> thing, baby. You close that little chapter. That chapter's behind you. Now you, you in the Ray back. It's in the past, we come back to this season and you want to do anything it takes to be the best thing that you can be. And you got to make those hard tries, whether they disrespected you before in the past season, it don't matter anymore, baby. It's a clean state. Honestly, when it came down to it, uh, Imran was my pick no matter what going in. It was either Samir or Imran. But I talked to Imran um, prior to, I guess, the draft itself. And I wanted him to, because of course he has insight on the league. And I think he's a hell of an outfielder. And then me and him being like that shortstop outfielder combo, sure. we cover so much ground. Absolutely. Yeah, for and sure. This guy has that been working covered. vigorously over the off season to yeah. kind of get in shape. And that yeah. guy's character, like I love that guy. 100%. I, Imran Merchant is That fire in the field you can't replicate. Absolutely. Right? And so that's just kind of how I wanted to build a team. And then I'm like, okay, the hot message you need. He's like, hey, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, I, I got to play something. I have family in this in this uh, league. I want to play with. I'm like, yo, the papi and me was like. Okay, baby, then show me how much you want him, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think interesting factor here is the fact that even before the picks were decided, I think Uves had already reached out to Imran, asking him whether he right. wanted to play for him. So, so I think... Nobody can argue that pick. Right. Right? Like when that pick was made, yes, there was shock in the GMs group that, that Oasis <laughs> took Imran, and now they're like, okay, that sets up something now. Yeah. Because... We, we all knew Taha wanted Imran at some mm-hmm. point. Right? He was going to figure out if Imran fell to the first round first, mm-hmm. first round of the draft, then Taha would probably try to figure things out. So I think, I think there was no doubt that uh, yeah. Oasis was going to take Imran, and that was a great pick. Right. Right? But I think I was still able to play some games on the GM group. Yeah, yeah you, <laughs> you, there's always games been shown. There's always games. But Taha, now that the draft is done, yeah. now that the draft is done, knowing the picks that were traded, yeah. do you think you, you came out and you got exactly what you needed in that trade? I mean, I think only the season will tell. I, I think on paper, I think um, the advantage that I was looking for, I think I, I got that on paper at least. Uh, how that translates um, on the field, we, it remains to be seen. But I think, uh, I mean, I, I know that there was a lot of conversation between the GMs as to who won the trade. I mean, it's debatable, but I think um, if you ask me, I think I think it was an even trade. The fact that I was able to switch my picks uh, for for Oasis third and fifth round, I think that made uh, a bit of a difference. Whether it made a huge difference, that remains to be seen. Yeah, you picked Kasha Vishal with that third. Right. Pick. Who was the who did you pick in the fifth? Yeah, right? it was it was uh, Fahim. Fahim. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Those are yeah. two They're quality really players. players. Yeah. 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 Two quality Great players, role. guys yeah. that are good role good role players Great, and yeah. will contribute do whatever you ask them to. Right. So those are good picks. And honestly, like just looking at your team from like. Uh, like a chemistry perspective yep. like I could tell like there's such good guys on your team that it's never going to be an issue where like you know guys won't get along with yeah. each other or anything no, like that sure. so yeah. that's, that's something that for sure. yeah. you have it's a cute thing to have but I mean, does it <laughs> translate into the field I don't know yet yeah. but um, personally like um, you know Inram Merchant was 
that was going to be my pick no matter what. It wasn't intentional for me to be like, oh, yeah. I'm going to pick it so that this trade happens, but right? Do, do you remember your third and fifth picks? Just to, you know, understand My third and fifth picks, like, got... we, it I think depend, thir- right? I think we you picked, really... with, was third, with a third pick, I think you picked Demur? Yeah. Was it Demur? No, no, no. Third, no. yeah, it was Demur. Was there more? And I don't remember who the fifth round I think it may have been either Asad Moten or Sadgai or Asad Moten. Mm-hmm. I think it was like Zod those three were us. picked Zod around Zod the same time. That's right. Yeah. 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 But, but uh, yeah. I, don't remember I actually think that, um, it, yeah, the season is always going to mm-hmm. tell. But I personally, I'm always going to say I'm going to vouch for the fact that we won that trade just to make myself look a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Rookie <laughs> GM doing big things. Yeah. So let's talk, that. let's so, talk about draft day. Let's yeah. talk about draft day. I've got my draft day routine. Everybody knows my draft yes. day routine. Mr. Trade right? Spectacular. You watch, <laughs> I watched the last 30 minutes of the movie draft day <laughs> where Kevin Costner uh, messes up with all these other GMs and he makes these fantastic trades that end up working out at the end of the day. That's always my draft day routine. I come into the draft... Try to think big. Try to think, okay, how can I get an advantage anywhere? And then I take my 30-minute power nap. <laughs> what was your draft day routine? That's insane, Zion. You yeah. do all of that yeah. every single year. Dude, that's what, that's what gets me pumped. That's what gets me motivated. That's what gets, clears my mind. I don't understand and I come how in. you're like, oh, I'm going to get pumped, watch this movie, and go to sleep. <laughs> like, just, what's No, it just makes you think big. This it makes you think different. You've seen that movie? You know Turns the entire draft on his head. See, this is the reason why I love Zion so much. I used to hate him before. I'm not gonna lie. Not hate him, but hate him. So I want to address on that podcast. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll continue about, about that. Yeah. But it's just like it's just like the cute little things that he does. You know, like oh yeah, I'm gonna watch draft day. <laughs> <laughs> like, all this stuff makes me love him more because that shows me how dedicated and passionate he 100%. is. Hundred percent. I don't know another GM that's ever gonna go and watch draft day or for all I care, Moneyball or whatever it's yeah. called. Like you know, before a draft, like I would think you would probably be looking at players and stuff. Stuff like that, but no, he wants to watch his film, and I respect that. And look, man, mashallah, the Mughals have had a dynasty, so maybe I need to watch drafts. Draft <laughs> yeah. This is a tip maybe, for all maybe, your Maybe GMs. that's why. And if you guys have any tips on how to make the semifinals every year, yeah. you can let me know offline. I'll happily tell you. Um, can't guarantee anything on the finals, though. But, um, but yeah, draft your routines. Uh, yeah, I mean. You know, nothing... Out I guess of not the how you've been involved in preparing for drafts in the past, I mean, it's, right? it's ironic, GM. though. I mean, uh, past few years, four years, um, uh, you know, I was more involved in doing analytics, you know, informing my GMs, potential GMs, uh, when I was in the draft. But this year, when I was actually a GM, I wasn't able to get much done. Um, you know, was busy with the, with work, uh, you know. Uh, and and running around. the Boston Marathon. Uh, yeah, preparing well, for, for that. So, yeah, as, that. interestingly... Um, I wasn't able to prepare as much as I would have, uh, but I think it turned out okay. Uh, the draft went went well. I guess That's having that experience planned. helps because you know some guys so. you yeah, know where that, guys yeah. fit in and stuff like that. And Imran's obviously is very invested sure, in it too. He sure. knows it. So yeah, I think I think you know the fact that you know the guys, but I think this year the number of new guys that we have. I think it, it's more than we've had the past uh, few years. I, I don't think it was. It was right right around the same number. Okay. We usually have some between 10 to 15. Right. And I think this year we had 18. Yeah. So okay. yeah, it was on the higher but side. I think but this year, uh, maybe it's just because I was a bit more removed from the process, not being a GM, but there was a lot more unknowns. Some of the guys that yeah, joined, right. we didn't have a tryout beforehand. So right. we knew guys from BSL Knights that had joined. Yeah. And we knew guys that we knew had been on the list for a long time that we've heard about right. that ended up joining. So we didn't have really have tangible or like quantifiable right. things to really base the players on. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I, th- I think after the second year, I think second year was a was an anomaly. I think you know oh. you had a lot of new guys, and I think I yeah. mean not the same this year, but I think you comparatively, I think um, it compares. Yeah, the and that year. that in year two was done for a reason. When we talked about it at the board, and we discussed, okay, every year we want to try to improve the league. We yeah. want to improve not just the content that we provide to the to the league, but we also want to improve the quality of playing the league. Exactly. Right? We want to try to get not necessarily the best players, but the best brothers for our league. Right? right? And so that year two, we had that open player draft system where yeah. you were allowed, every team was allowed to pick two players outside of the league to join the league. Obviously, everybody's going to try to pick players that either they're friends or good brothers or whatnot, yeah. and probably mm-hmm. good players as and well. And the guys that came in the league were like Batar and Rayhan and... Uh, yeah. Daher Mirza yeah. and many others Jibran, guys, Hassan. Jibran, Hassan that were like monumental players in the league that have yeah. been a big For focal sure. point of what the league's all about right yeah. so 
And maybe the new guys that we have this year, maybe, you know, three, four years down the line, maybe we, we, we might yeah, be talking know, about it. There's always surprises that come through the draft. Like, yeah. you, you've got guys like Oways that came, came out of nowhere. Yeah, Oways and Asa Sayer <laughs> both, right. were both second-round picks, right? They were both yeah. unknowns. Right. And funny enough with Oways, um, I can't remember who we were looking at, but we didn't we didn't know who he was. I didn't know any of you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, oh, this is the guy. We see this tall, really gorgeous man. Like, he's beautiful, sure, that's sure. for sure. There's no doubt about that. Mashallah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um and then we picked Daha in the first round. Uh, and then we were like, who to go? He's like, oh, you should get this guy. And we're like, who is he? He's like, oh, the guy over there. And I'm like, can I focus with this man on the, on the field being so gorgeous? Um, <laughs> but then nonetheless, so then we literally, it was Daha that was like, this guy's amazing. Pick him. And it was amazing. Like, like it, it was exactly, it's what you want in a second round pick, right? And both. And the big thing is, is like, talent's one thing, but it was the character. And that's why he's a GM today with that purpose, right? That he had the characteristics that you wanted in not only a teammate, but someone to run a league as well. Um, I guess going into the draft um, just before would, I, I gotta stop you spoiler alert so you traded me because it was too gorgeous to be honest that played a role for <laughs> sure that, that played a role okay I'll, I'll address the trade <laughs> so Ashen, Ashen did have this a game, better okay, season I'm, after I, I'm just gonna tell you what happened with the trade we were not no one's gonna believe but we were never shopping a ways obviously I think you know that other people know that Daha was involved in the conversations being on the team he knew that as well we were told that someone else is available on another team. I'm not going to mention who, who had played with us in the past. Mm -hmm. So we inquired and what they said they wanted always in return. That somehow flipped into us offering always, which never happened. Mm -hmm. That player was just like, we want this guy. We didn't take the trade because it wasn't a fair, it didn't make sense for us because we wanted to keep always and it didn't mm -hmm. make sense for us. Through that Z heard, I heard you're shopping always. Mm -hmm. The Mughals have had with the team going for Hajj and other guys not being able to make it. It was like yeah. a commitment thing, right? Yeah. It's like, I just want to make playoffs. If we make playoffs, somehow, I, just don't want, I don't want to be one of the two teams that don't make it. I want to make it, see where we go from there kind of thing. And he bought how Waze was available. And around that same time, our biggest issue was we had Taha who was having the season of his life, like Ted Williams of <laughs> BSL, right? Like batting 750 and playing out of his mind the two spot. We had Poppy at three, who had all the power, and we had Ray at four, who had power as well. So we had this two, three, four, but the rest of the lineup, I wasn't hitting as well, and it kind of led to some holes kind of thing. So the thing we were discussing around that time was, let's move Daha to three, Ray to four, and then always to six so he can free swing because he has the power and he'll just generate runs. And we end up being putting Ray at three and then always at six. So essentially having two cleanups, right? But you don't want to have someone like always having less at bats. And that's where Hassan Chaudhry came into it because he fit in as that two or three guy to get on base, which worked well with whatever we had. And it led to other guys being there. And that's how it happened. And I think both teams, been, at the time, it made sense for both sides. Guys, I told everyone in the league, I think uh, Sham came to me and was like, uh, I know I'm, I'm going to play the Moguls in the finals now because of you, because this trade, <laughs> this trade made them the best team. Oh, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to make your right. It's going to be amazing. But I think it makes more sense to us. Yeah. And it didn't help that we end up the first weekend of the trade, we played against each other. And beautiful. you guys rocked us, right? And then in the playoffs, we matched up against each right. other and we beat yeah. you guys. From, from our perspective, like you said, Hashim, it was all about making the playoffs last year. I knew... And a lot, I, I knew the I knew which players were missing certain weeks. I knew when Nadim was coming back, and I knew as soon as Nadim got back, um, I think Ismail was away for a weekend. So I'm like, I'm never gonna have my complete team until yeah. we get to the playoffs. And that obviously we were struggling going into that break. I think it was the August break that uh, we were approaching. So at that point, I was making a trade for somebody else. We had agreed on that trade, and what ended up happening was. The other GM pulled out. And so when he pulled out, at that point, I didn't have Nadim around because he was at Hajj. And so I was relying on other guys that have never been GMs before for to consultation make to make yeah. those decisions, right? Guys like Riyadh, guys like Faraz, guys like Imran Jodri. I'm like, guys, what do we do here? Because Who possess those skills. They do. But it's they different do. if you don't play week in, week out, you don't strategize exactly. every year. Especially right? because they've never been in these situations yeah. before, right? So I'm asking these guys their opinion. And Riyadh does the analytics for me, Imran does the analytics and whatnot. So we're like, we need to make a move. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be a big move, but let's do it. And at that point, that other GM was the same GM you guys were trying to make a trade with. So he pulled out that. Was it the same player? It was the same player. Really? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was the same That's player. That's insane. It seems, so, it seems like a podcast between former GMs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, just, well, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of history in this room. There's, yeah. there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot of things. Yeah, exactly. Maybe this might go out longer than half an hour with so yeah. much stuff we're But I, so, I think it turned so, out okay for it, both people. It turned, it turned out okay. Both people hit right? their goals, right? So what ended up happening was 
Then I reached out to Hashim and Ray, and they were like, you we're yeah. not really looking to trade OS. I'm like, listen, I'm trying to make a move here because I got to change change things up. I knew uh, Ismail was in that final week. We need somebody that can get us to that final week and lock up the playoffs, and then I can not worry about trying to make playoffs in the final week. And that just ended up working out. Yeah, and then <laughs> it turned us, out we <laughs> ended up playing the Ottomans in the, in the wild card game, and then we get yeah. smashed. <laughs> Um, and then also with that too, we with Poppy being gone, we needed a shortstop, and we were like, "Hey, we want Ake. If yeah, we're gonna give up a shortstop, we need." We, we yeah, that, I right? was very reluctant. And to get then the um, you were like, "Okay," and you were looking at the team, and then you had a few guys in mind, and then you were like, "We want Gashi," and we we're like, "Okay, these three guys are guys that we don't want to part with, but we understand it being fair to kind of make it fair." And he was Gashi, and we were like. Of all guys, like we picked Gashi because his personality and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and it was tough to say. I remember we right, had exactly. a conversation where we were yep. just like. Like always, the one thing about Kashif too. We have a former GM. We have such, and we were in first place at the time. That's why it was more controversial because yeah. we had no reason to make the move, right? Yeah. Um, and then obviously, as you know, it led some discourse amongst the team, kind of being like, we don't understand why the trade was made, and we were doing so well, and it just changed the chemistry. Yeah, and then the trade leaked somehow before we actually it announced it. What happened? Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, it just so, got messy. So, um, Anyways, this we'll, is a messy we'll, leak. It, it <laughs> was, what happened was it, it got leaked um, because like forty guys in the league are related, and it found out amongst that family. So. Uh, the Wahids, the Wahid and the Mamuts found out, and I think that's how Kashif found out. And then I think at the same time, Farhan Uzma found out. So our, Farhan, not knowing, he thought we already oh, yeah, spoken yeah. to Owes and to Kashif, who probably already heard at that time. Yeah. But in our group chat was like, so someone's getting traded. We were like, <laughs> my guy, like this is a, can't you private message me and Rayhan separately to ask who's getting traded? If that's happening. Um, so that's why it kind of led to we wanted to make sure we talked to Kashif, who I think was was working at the time. Um, and I think uh, Rayhan was able to get a hold of you, and I was able to, get to talk to you right after. But yeah, so that's how it went down. Um, the looks played played a role for sure. And again, both of us well, met it, our goals. At the end of the day, it all comes full circle. Oasis on the moguls and yeah. Rayhan's on the moguls now. So we're gonna have to. Go. Uh, whenever we turn off the mic, we're gonna have to discuss openly who this player was that we were being offered by the same GM because oh. um, I'm really curious if it was the same guy. Um, I don't sorry. know. It could have been one. It could have been you were talking to him before yours fell through, and then ours fell through. Yeah. Down. What it was, but I, I spoke to that player and he th- he thought he was getting traded somewhere else, and then that fell through. So, anyways, so way anyways, off topic, but going back to it, um, I guess let me bring up both of your first round picks. So you had first pick overall, and you mm-hmm. went with the Shaheen. god Slim Slim Shaheen Limbada, yeah. uh, playoff MVP, and then um, you went with Riz. So right. you both went essentially with guys that I mean, Rayhan and Shaheen, as people that don't know, have been friends for the better oh, part yeah. of thirty years, yeah. right? And you had a chance to play with Shaheen and. Yourself um, as well. In, 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 in um, soccer. Yeah. And obviously Riz and Imran well. are, are, yeah. are brothers, right? Um, so tell us more about your going into, into number one. It's, it's a tough pick because you it have a lot a of big pick. names on there. You have guys like... Um, you have Ismail, Isma, you have Crazy, exactly. you have you know, Shaheen and a few others. Yeah. Like Rizwan as well. Like You have Zahid as well. Like You can even think of you know, yeah. take him first round. But here's the thing, right? Like Right off the bat, one like I'm a younger GM, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like I have a lot of IQ and I have a lot to offer this league as a GM. But at the same time, I understand, like, you know, when someone's being talked to by a kid, right? Sometimes, some guys, yes. Some guys might some guys, that. that doesn't resonate well with them. Absolutely. Right? So I'm like, okay, well, now I need to bring some respect factor. And that's when we got Rehan. But then at the same time, I'm like, yo, Shaheen is arguably one of the best leaders in this league, mm-hmm. right? That guy can turn it on with the bag, with the glove. But also, he's just like a, a natural leader. I saw it in... You know, soccer. This guy rounds up the troops, tells us what's what it is, face value, and you know everybody starts to play really, really well. So for me, knowing the history between him and Rehan, you know, we had to bridge that as well. There was yeah. nothing to do there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'll have to address. This is like this is my <laughs> confessional for me to get out all these emotions related to last year's team. And We're having a therapy session right yeah, now. Yeah, hundred percent. I feel great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's a full circle now. They're back on the same team, and I think that uh, man. Uh, we're also versatile. We all can hit. So that's a one, two, three punch that arguably is one of the best in the league. So for sure. I'm excited. I'm just really excited. That was a no brainer for us. How are you picking Riz no matter who was available there? At six? Yeah, I think the fact that I had seventh pick and all of the big hitters were gone before it was my turn it's to pick. Six. I, I was six. So six. I think we had five big hitters in yeah. the draft and I think all of them were gone. Uh, but uh, Riz, I think, is, is extremely underrated. Um, I know that he's been one of the best pitchers, and even though he had announced uh, quite clearly that he won't be pitching this year, I, I think it was a no-brainer for me. I, I think I had to pick Rez. Um, I have seen him play third base uh, the first year, if you guys remember, and I think he was he's solid. I mean, he's not 
flashy at shortstop, but I think he'll give you what you need, which is to stop the balls and make the throws. He knows first. the game. I think in his first year, he played. And I think third he's base a solid hitter. Uh, averages what close to six hundred. So I think I know what I'm getting with Riz. Yeah, um, sure. So so yeah, I mean, I, I my mind was pretty clear that I I was going to pick uh, Riz. He's a quick guy that. too. Like you, you oh, got speed. He could run base away. Well. So for sure. Yeah, Riz is five to a player, right? He, he doesn't have the flashiness that some of the other guys do, right. but you know what you're getting, and he's going to deliver exactly what he delivered last year or more. Right. So it's, you're not going to get any loss. I think, too, um, Zahi, you could definitely speak to this, and I guess all of us could, but whenever you're a GM, you just feel it's a need for you to kind of sacrifice a bit for the better of your team. You're like, you're going to be that guy, right? So might be, you might put yourself in positions where it may not be ideal for you, but for the betterment. And Riz, I think, had to make certain... I mean, pitching is an example, right? He kind of took the mound because he's like, it made sense. I'll just pitch. Mm-hmm. He, he wanted to play in, in the field because he prefers that um, and kind of make those sacrifices. So I think having him unleashed in that sense and being right. just play your game and play free like that is going to make all the difference. Absolutely. Um, which will only make him better, right? And I think Omer, Omer Sheikh in our podcast, um, the last one, our podcast number one, mentioned how... It's going to be so much better because you won't have the stress of the GM stuff. There's a lot of small things that come up day to day that you have to focus on and For just sure. showing up and playing ball, which won't be risk because he'll do a lot more than that just because of right. his investment in the league. But not having the risk, like not having that being a requirement, rather doing it because by choice right. helps a lot in kind of your approach. Yeah, I, I think Riz has played on teams who, I mean, he has played four years with Gibran. Yeah. Um, I think he he sort of contained himself. I, I, I don't think he went all out with his hitting, for instance. Uh, one you, of the practice games that we've played, I think he, uh, on drum coin, he clo- went close to the fence uh, on two at-bats. So I know that he's got big bat as well if he, if, he, yeah. if he need it. Um, and the fact that he is not a GM anymore, uh, the fact that he does not have those kind of responsibilities, I think we are going to see a different risk this year. Yeah, you see a different side as well. You know? yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I'll get to that actually. I want to draft all three merchants. Oh, that didn't God. work out. That didn't pan out. Uh, but but I'm yeah, I'll get to that. I'm if one idea. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But it's interesting you guys mentioned like having guys that sacrifice. Um, for the betterment of the team and I think there's a lot of brothers in this league that are totally like that's the one fear I had as a GM right like I'm like okay now I have a bunch of outfielders and a bunch of guys that you know are used to a certain position exactly but now there's a guy in my opinion who's arguably a little bit better at yeah. that position so now how do I bridge that um, with them or how do I how do I get them to feel comfortable being in either like a, a position that I want them to play in or like, how do I bring that conversation up? And you know, as soon as I mention to any of these brothers, like they're all like, "Yeah, man, play us where you want. It doesn't yeah. matter to us as long as you know we get to play um, baseball and we win." And that's right? the blessing of the league in general, right? Yeah, Probably say about all ninety six guys is like they want to win. They know how to approach the game. It's brotherhood first, and they get that right. At the end of the day, um, winning heals everything. So at least to it being a success, someone has to bat twelve. Someone right. has to sit some innings. Someone has to play catcher. And it's going to be the nature of the beast, right? But you split around. You understand your role. And right. softball is one of those sports in which every single guy is important because it's an individual thing, right? Every single guy. Like, if your bottom lineup is not hitting the ball well, you're going to have yeah, a lot of dead innings, right? Time. But if those guys are committed to it and know that, yep. that it goes 1 through 12, changes your entire approach. And we've seen that in our league every single year. Though the super, superstars will always be superstars. It's that bottom, right? The reason the Mamluks had that season three years ago were guys mm-hmm. like Mo Kala and Asad Moten and Riyadh and... Bas- uh, Basir that were absolutely amazing it's like that bottom is what changed it right because your guys like like Shez like Umer um, Hassan Chaudhary Jibs Tahir Riz are all going to yeah. do their part right because right. they're, they're, they're stars in the league right but it's those bottom guys that they can turn around and churn and know what the role that they play and play to that level then it's going to you can't beat that team, right? And I, th- I think I've maintained your team this... was like that in year two as well, right? Exactly. So I've maintained this over the years that it's not your top five six picks that decides the outcome of the season. 100%. It's your bottom oh. six picks uh, that you know essentially yeah, yeah. Um, drives how your season goes. Because you know, I mean, yeah, first it's sorry. very rare that a top six player, whoever you're picking, your top call it three picks, right? First three rounds that has a really down year. They're, exactly. always, they're always going to deliver the same right. average sure. and the same number of RBIs, home runs that you're going to get. Exactly. Right? But if you can promote somebody that was a sixth or seventh round pick and he performs like a right. third round pick. Yeah, man. That, that's what gives you the, That's why when you look at the Sultans from last year, they had guys like Gamel. They had guys like Umar Chaudhary. They, they, they far surpassed where their draft value was last year. Right? And that's what every team needs. Right? And so the sleeper picks, just like you took, we were talking about Taha, 
are the most important thing to a team. Yeah, that's what you're looking for when you're trying to draft. I'll never forget. In year two, we played against the Ayubids, your team, in the semifinals the year that you won. And in that semifinal, you guys just rocked us. But it wasn't even like it was, there were some big home runs. I think you guys won something like seventeen to ten. Maybe it was even right. worse. But um, I remember just being up there, and every single guy was just dropping the ball everywhere. And like you can't beat this team. Every single one was just like perfectly placing the ball, and it was like this team was just humming. And it was right. being like you can't beat that. Like every single guy being like you wanted to almost like wave the white flags. You're like every single guy just showed up, and they were just smacking the ball wherever they want to at will and we had no answer for that it was amazing right I think everybody felt really good coming into that game and I think yeah yeah, you just gotta be gelling at the right time. That's that's, that's the way you win. Yeah. That's the way you win in BSL. You Absolutely. wanna win the title, you gotta be gelling at the right time. And in the be... past, it was we have our Ramadan break in the middle of the season. And that year, I think you guys came back and we were the best team after the end of the season. This right. year, obviously, we have it beforehand, so it changes things. Yeah. Another question I wanted to ask both of you was you thoughts on, I mean, going into the draft, you have three guys that could pitch, but none of them have been full time pitchers in the league for a while. They haven't been. For you, you have a couple of guys in mind that could be your pitchers too. So, what are your thoughts on, on like, what are you, who are you going with at the mound? So, um, you know, again, all three of those guys can pitch um, pretty well. Because it's, uh, it's Riyadh, Hamza Hussein. Hamza Hussein, and then. I don't know who's that, who's that third guy. I feel like there was a third. Oh guy. no, Fuzel was in the in the in the works, the but okay. that trade didn't come, kind of go through. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I can pitch if I wanted to. You know, I learned a few things from Zahid <laughs> and Tun Sirubai. You know, no, I'm kidding. But um, shout out to Riyadh first of all, because I think Riyadh is one of those guys. Again, talking about sacrifice, we're talking yeah. about guys that will do anything to to kind of help the team and win. This guy, like, man, much of this guy has such a beautiful smile. Yeah, Let's be dope, honest. His hair is, like, great. always on point. I don't understand. Like, <laughs> I don't understand how this guy... He's just wonder, like, too. I can't yeah. believe that guy is the age that he is, man. He don't tell me his looks age, because like I'm just going to, like... You think he's your age. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what I, I think. think. Yeah, but... But anyway, like... Uh, Shouts to Riyadh, man. Shout to Tans, too. Yeah, and shout to Tans, man. I love that guy. Big man Tans. Big man Tans. Anyway, um, thing with Riyadh is, like, we. I don't think he expected that he would be pitching this year for Sundays. I think he wanted to play um, in the field. And then I kind of approached him. I'm like, you know, we don't really have a set pitcher. Yeah. Would you be okay to pitch? Because we, I, I know he pitches in the Thursday league um, in BSL Knights. And he's like, you know what, man? Anything for the team. Anything for That's the great. team. And, you know, right off the bat, like, we played our exhibition, and this guy was on the money. And it makes all the difference because I'm very confident with the defensive team that we have. Riyadh, excellent pitcher. So it just makes it really tough for teams. Really, like we, I, I feel like we hardly have any gaps, and with him pitching, like we're gonna have a good time. Were there guys in the draft that were picked, maybe a couple picks before you, that you guys were slamming your head like we <laughs> lost like on this guy? Feeling. Well, there's two guys I'll tell you right off the bat that I really badly wanted and didn't end up. Well, of course, IQ's my guy. You know, IQ and Ron Kurashi. He's my, he's my, he's basically my hubby. Don't tell Aisha about that. <laughs> but um, he, like I want him on my team anytime I can get him, right? But unfortunately, I think the Mamluks picked him. Like literally, the, I don't know if it was a pick before, the two picks before, and I was like, it fell at the right round at the right time, and it just broke my heart. But that's okay because we, you know, we got Asad Moten, Asad Moten and Ali Wadi are both arguably really, really good, um, you know, first basemen as well. And then also, uh, what's his name? Oh, that's a bad thing to say, but. Basil. Basil was supposed to be like my starting yeah, pitcher and he was falling in the that. same pick as well until the Sultans. Like Shamil like looked at me with his suit all like getting ready. He's like <laughs> So overdressed for yo, the occasion. Yeah. So overdressed, but yo, you know, I dig it, man. Like Rex still represent, man. I know where he was, he was ready to be cold. And this guy like walked by me and I felt like I don't know, like a white walker was going by me, man. It was really, really cool in that room. And then he looks at me while he's got the mic in his hand, he's like, with our whatever pick. I pick Basil Jelani, drops the mic, and he looks at me as he walks back and sits down. And I'm like, yo, man, like, I don't know what I did. I, I thought we were cool, but I guess not. And that really hurt, too, because Basil and I had a nice conversation after. And I was like, you know what, man? You're set up on a really good team. The champions from last year, Sean was a good guy. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that was a really good pick. But I'm – hey, you can't get everything that you want, 100%, right? Yeah, of course. So that's the name of the game, and I'm really confident with the team we have. And I don't know, Da, did you have some guys in mind? Yeah, I mean, so I thought before you answer that, I was I wanted to ask you the pitcher question too right. because you guys made a late trade for Doc after the fact. We did, um, and then so kind of what is what is? Yeah, what I kept you guys thinking that I have Riz. 
He's like, that's your thing, right? But then, <laughs> and that's the been draft, rumored being like, after oh, the draft he's ended, not been a like, pitch, <laughs> but then come through week, week three, he's been a pitch. So right. I think we can put that. That's obviously not going to happen. Right, right. The obviously. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we traded for Zia. Uh, I think um, at the end of the draft, he kind of recognized that we don't have a solid pitcher. Uh, and obviously, we want to respect Riz's decision of not pitching. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, so we made that trade. But I think we, we had a couple of pitchers who we could have gone with had we not traded for uh, the uh, for Doc. I had pitched um, uh, in a couple of seasons before. Yeah. Amir had pitched as well. But we all know that, you know, we're not the best pitchers walking around uh, in BSL. So I think we had to make that trade. And I think we had to give up Azur Zafar. But I think uh, uh, looking at the trade now, I think uh, it's it's a good trade. I think we're excited. Um, Dog brings a lot to the table. And I think, yeah. And sorry to add to that, uh, talking about, I guess, guys that you wanted that just slipped out. I really, back. really, really wanted Z. And we That's had a lot of don't lie, don't yeah, lie. We had a lot of conversations. They're, they're holding hands right now. This kind of came together. Fast and don't throw the ball. We've broken all the fast already. Oh we've, we've, we've taken these. We were hoping to get Z in third round. Um, I think Z was generally seemed excited at the fact that you yeah. know there was prospects of uh, him playing um, on, on on Ottomans. Yeah, he's always wanted to be I think one it was. Uh, sense. Right, so, <laughs> <laughs> sure, but I think um, um, it was it was uh, uh, the fact that we went for Abdullah after. Um, so we were debating between Abdullah and Z uh, in second round. I think uh, we just wanted to see how picking Abdullah at second and then letting Z go and, and pick him at third because we had an early th- third round pick uh, that didn't pan out, um, but. It's all good. I think um, Z knows how much I respect him as a player. Um, you know, he, he's he been one of the studs of the league. Uh, that would be an understatement. Yeah, I'm aging though. So that's a problem. <clears throat> Age like fine wine, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I, th- I think, you know, looking at the team now, um, I have no grievances. I think the fact... Um, I'm really happy with the team. Uh, and and the high. fact that we... <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, going back to Rehan, I think um, after I had picked Rehan, I was hoping against hope that I'd land Imran Merchant as well in first round. That was not going to happen because I know that yeah, it's a big uh, ass. Nasids were looking at Imran. Absolutely. I knew that he was looking that at was him. Yet. But I, I just took that gamble of... Pick, I mean, picking Rehan was uh, a no-brainer. Absolutely. I had to pick him. Um... Well, okay, so there's one thing I have to ask you. So, on our last pod, we had the GM and the Mamluks, this is specifically for Taha, um, talk about how he ranked his teams for the year. And his opinion was that the Ottomans were the worst team. Is there anything you have to say back to that? And what are your thoughts on him kind of approaching (laughs) it that way? I don't know uh, if he. So, knowing Hassan, I know that he's big on shortstop. If he's only taking that into account and rating my team based on the fact that I don't have a seasoned shortstop, I think he's he's kind of his his assessment is um, I don't I don't know what he's thinking, but I think I have a really good team from one to twelve. I think we uh, we don't have the kind of um, you know uh, great power ba- uh, power bats, but the fact that uh, we have really good. Uh, lower uh, bottom six picks. I, th- I think I'm, I'm really excited with how our team looks. In general, do you guys feel like any other teams stand out to you guys as the teams to beat or guys you felt had a really good draft? Just because Z landed on Abbas, it's Abbas is the team to beat. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. yeah. I'll be honest with you, Like when it comes down to it, like there's you respect every opponent that you play. Right? There's, yeah. no, there's no easy easy games unless you're the Abbas. Like no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's no easy games, and so for me, there's no team that stands out. I'm not afraid of any team. My team's not afraid of any team. Um, come season, let's go, right? That's all that matters. That's the move, hundred percent. You're looking looking at the teams. When I looked at the Ottomans team after the draft, okay, there are some question marks, but if everything works out, I see this team being, being very similar to that Ubits team that you guys had. That won the championship in 2014 or 15, yeah, yeah. whatever year it was. Balance across the board. No superstar game changers. Yes, Imran is defensively. There's no question, right? But offensively, you guys batted 1 through 12 and everybody got their, their hits. And you look at the, the Mughals team from this year. 
It looks very similar to the way that Ottoman's team was in 2016. We and played them in the exhibition. You guys looked fantastic. Back. Right? Ton of power. Th- ton of power. power question marks about pitching, but that year you guys had Doc in his first year. And he was a menace. You, you turned out to be a fantastic pitcher. If Riyadh can turn into that, that'll solidify the rest of your team. right? So every team obviously comes into the season with question marks. right? Mm. If you can fill those holes, if you can fill that um, uncertainty that you have and guys step up, then that's what makes teams... But I think if, if you look at it, else. look at our team defensively, you have Kashya Varshad, Imran, Abdullah Akhtar in the outfield. Yeah, those are three That's, really, really good yeah. fielders. So, I mean, I know that we tend to give more weight to um, offense here in BSL. It's an offensive league. It is, it is but I mean, yeah, I think... Defense is important. G- given, given the fact that we have smaller fields, I, I get what you're saying, but you, you can't discount the fact that you have, you know, probably, arguably the best uh, outfield. Yeah. Oh come on! <laughs> come on, skip, man, skip. <laughs> he said, yeah. ar- "He said, arguably, Poppy." Yeah, that's that's okay. I like I'm, 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 I'm we really can, we can argue about it in another in another no, podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> I, just wanted, I just wanted like the spice, put the spicy pea. In the <laughs> so, shout out to the Raptors. Shout out to the Raptors. Um, okay. Well. I know this podcast has gone a little bit longer than the other one, but we had a lot of interesting takes. Yeah. We we went back into memory lane. Went we back did. to memory lane. Talked we about we last year. <laughs> yeah, sorry, as host, we talked. I talked a lot, so I apologize. I had some things hey. on my chest I wanted to get off. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's stuff that hasn't been talked about, For sure. right? So yeah. uh, keep it spicy. Probably keep some new readers or guys that aren't even in the league anymore. They want to come back and learn <laughs> about how those trades happen. Yeah, man. For right? sure. That was that was probably the first. Mid-season trade that's happened in BSL. So yeah, I think there was one was exciting. one, but it was like the first or second week. <laughs> it was exciting. Yeah, yeah. for sure, baby. It's always gonna happen when you have Papi around. So like a uh, big blockbuster, everything. Okay, so <laughs> shout out to Always on Saudi. You know that guy Always on Instagram. <laughs> you want to follow some great content? You follow him, baby. Okay. Okay. Awesome guys. I want to thank you guys for your time. I thank know you so much. I know it's been a busy month for you guys. I know the how you're running the Boston Marathon preparing for the draft after all of that and whatnot. So I want to thank you guys for your time. It was great chatting with you. Um, getting your insight on how your draft day went, what your strategies were, what made you guys different. And I think you guys both have pretty good teams. So Absolutely. Yeah, it should make that, for man. a very exciting season. So yeah, thank you guys. Awesome. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Papi out. <laughs> okay, so who, is it, who, who offered you the trade last year? It was... <laughs>